Glad to be here tonight. If you've got your Bibles, 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 19. 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 19. You got it? Say amen. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to a lad, Carry him to his mother. Lord, we ask you to move in this service tonight. Anoint me. Help us tonight. In Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. You may be seated. Take him to his mama. The lad went out into the field. I'll tell you the story that we're talking about here. There was a Shunammite woman. And when Elisha would come by, she saw him one day. She saw the man of God. And she said, hey, Mr. Man of God, turn into the house here and have a bite to eat. And she would do that. And she would come in and he would stop and eat. And they would enjoy dinner. And down the road he'd go. And this went on and went on. And one day the, the woman said to her husband, said, hubby, why don't we build the man of God a room onto the house that he might rest himself as he passes by? I want to do more than just feed him. I want to give him a resting place. And so they built a room on the side of the house, and that was the preacher's room. And she put furniture in it, and she made it ready. And when he would pass by, he would come in off the road and uh, uh, eat a bite, take a nap, do whatever, and down the road he'd go. Well, one day the, the man of God came in. And he said, you know, this woman ain't done nothing but bless and to give. But what do you need, woman? And she said, I am of my own people. In other words, I got enough. We're good. I just want to bless you. We're good. And that, that worked out for a little bit, but, uh, the, but the Elisha said, you know, I just really would like to, to do something. And his servant Gehazi said, uh, well, uh, Elisha, I don't know if you realize it or not, but she has no children. Now, she's, you know, don't have any children and her husband is up in age. Uh, it, it would be a good thing. So he calls her in and she stands at the door and he said, a year from now, you're going to have a baby. And true to form, there it was. Now, we don't have much between now, nothing, between that point and the time that the child is older. The child has grown. But I would surmise just by assumption and, uh, and being careful assuming things because you know what happens when you assume, right? Makes a donkey out of you and someone else. Not me. But uh, just write that word real slowly. You'll figure it out. But uh, they, it, it, it's, it, it'll mess you up. But we can pretty much just by track record continue on that every time that Elisha came by, he turned in for food. He turned in for, for a night's rest and went on down about his road. And, and it was a good thing and a blessing to him all of those years that that child was growing. But when the child was grown... The child went out one day to visit his dad. Who, if he was an old man back then, imagine how old he was now. But got out there to see his dad, and while he was out there, he said, My head, my head. And they got somebody to carry him home. Brought him to his mama. His mama sat him down on his, her lap, and I imagine she held him and whatever. And the boy died. Graveyard dead. Laid him on the preacher's bed, in the bedchamber of the preacher that she had built. And she sent word to her husband, said, send me a lad to get ready and take me to see the man of God. All is well. And off she went to the man of God. And as the man of God saw her approach, he grabbed Gehazi and said, go, 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 go see what's going on. All is well. Now she came to the man of God and she grabbed him 
And Gehazi's like, get back, you dirty old... That was his job. Protect the man of God. Serve the man of God. Don't allow anything to touch, corrupt, and hurt. And Elisha's like, wait a minute. Can't you see this woman's broken? She's hurting. And that's when she told the man of God, the child, said, I told you not to lie to me. And he sent Gehazi and said, go take my staff and lay it upon the child. Off he went. Now Gehazi must have been a doctor because when he got there, he come back out and he told Elisha, he said, he's dead. He's not responding. He's not breathing. He's, you know, he gave the official diagnosis, I guess. But I want to, in looking at this, we got a child that would not exist had it not been for a mother and a father. We've got a mom and dad that made up their mind to put something into a relationship with God. To get close to allow their life to be affected by a relationship with God. And then when their blessing that came from that relationship became damaged, they taught that child the greatest lesson he could ever learn. Maintain your relationship with God. Job said, The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, but what? Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to talk to you, if not for a mother or father. If not for a mother or father. You know, if it wasn't for that woman who was not a, of the people, if it wasn't for that woman, there would have been no child. Brother, I, I am like working really hard here. I can't hear myself at all. But if it wasn't for that, no child. If it wasn't for that woman maintaining her relationship, that child, thank you, would have been dead and gone and lost. Oh, I feel better already. <laughs> There's a lot of other examples in the Bible. Let's look at a couple. Matthew chapter 17 tells us of a man who came to Jesus and brought his son and says, Jesus, my son is a lunatic. He has a spirit that drives him and throws him into the fire and causes him to harm himself. Parents, if it wasn't for a dad, if it wasn't for a mother, we've got some problems in children's lives. Let me just explain it to you like this, like God showed me. If it wasn't for the dad, the kid would still be possessed of the devil. Your children cannot do it on their own. You may be seated. Lord bless each and every one of you. You cannot leave it to these young people to live for God. You cannot say, child, I'm going to bring you to church and let's just see how you turn out. You cannot say, I mean, you know, dude, just be honest with me here for a second. I know you're busy. But, high five. I want you to be honest with me, okay? When there's good cartoons on and your mom says, do you want to go to church, would you go or are you going to stay home and watch cartoons? Be honest. You don't know. There you go. I mean, I, I, parents, am, am I off my rocker or do you know what I'm talking about? Your children have an infection of the flesh. They have an infection of sin. They have an infection of wanting the wrong things because they are persuaded on every day. When they get up in the morning and they turn on the television, I don't care if you watch the news or if you watch Blue's Clues. I don't care if you watch Barney or Sesame Street. You're going to be infected by the things of this world. And I'm telling you, parents, you cannot get that infection out and you cannot let the key leave it to your children. You've got to be the parent parent. I mean, I mean, if I ask you the same question, I mean, you're in the middle of playing, what's that favorite game you play? Minute War or... Huh? What's your, what's your favorite Xbox game? Yeah. Okay, what do you... Modern Warfare. You play that? Okay. You're in the middle of Modern Warfare. 
You've gone further than you ever had before. You've got six lives, and the enemy is right there, and you're fixing to get your high score. And Mom says, it's time for church. Do you want to go? You don't want to go. You'll be, I thank you for being honest with me. Hello? This lunatic kid was jumping in the fire. He wasn't jumping at Jesus' feet. He was cutting himself, hurting himself, destroying himself. But a dad said, we're going to Jesus. If it wasn't for a mother or father, I'm going to tell you, parents, we've got a job ahead of us. We've got work ahead of us. We cannot casually sit back and watch to see if our kids live for God. Because I don't care how much you try. The world has... Hello? There's more people out there trying to get your kids on drugs than there are trying to get your kids to live for Him. Let's look at Matthew chapter 9. A man by the name of Jarius comes up. Lord, my daughter is dead. Okay, I'm going to ask her. Well, she's real sick at the time. I'm going to ask, so who can I ask a real dumb question to? Raise your hand. Brother Roger, if it wasn't for that dad, where would the daughter be? Where she is right now, but she'd have been there a lot earlier, huh? If it wasn't for a dad, if it wasn't for the parents taking control of that child's situation, that child would have been dead at 12 years old. But Jesus. You see, but dad got down there and repealed unto Jesus. And Jesus, my child is sick unto death. Please come and raise my daughter. Hello? Parents? They're not going to make it without you. Kids, you're not going to make it without them. I'm going to tell you what. That flesh, if it wanted to live, would have made it. But that daughter was willing to surrender herself to death. Now, in, in, in type and shadow, I'm talking in the spirit now. In the spiritual realm, your children are more willing to die than to live for God. Hello? It takes... A parent to bring a child to live for God. I know I'm not making any sense. I'm going to work on this. I'm going to try to get better. I like this. You know, sometimes it takes a little bit of arguing. Sometimes it takes a little bit of hard-headedness. Any women in here hard? No, don't raise your hand. Come on. It takes a little bit of mama. To fight for her kids. And I, I, I guarantee you, you ain't never seen Sister Jessica move so fast as if I would grab that little boy on hers on the front row by the ears and fling him across to the other wall. She would probably go check on him and then she'd knock me out. Hello? Because there's something about a mama that will fight for her kids. There's something about a dad that would fight for his children. No matter what it took, this woman comes to Jesus in Matthew chapter 16, 22 through 26. And she says, My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Can I tell you what? She wasn't a child of God. She was Canaanite. She was somebody out yonder. You know, it's sad. Sometimes it's those on the outside that fights harder for their kids than those on the inside. Hello? Hello? But Sister Johnson, she came to Jesus. She said, my daughter is not just tormented. Sister Vicar, she was grievously vexed. I mean, I, I, I imagine that's one of the morning, noon, and night things. Grievously vexed with the devil. You know, I don't care if it's a devil of the flesh or a devil of the spirit. Your kid's getting flecked, uh, vexed by some devil... Get them to the church and let's pray the devil off of them. Amen. You'll watch that old boy devil just go running with his tail between his legs. Hello? But watch what Jesus said. I know what he said. I don't need to read it. He said, it is not meat for me to cast the children's food to the dogs. He called her a dog, Brother Corey. He called that child's mama a dog, brother. Hey! Who are you coming to the house 
asking for what belongs to my children. What business is what I have of yours? Oh, I'm going to tell you there's a mama here. There's a mama that says, oh, nay, Lord, but even the children, even the dogs, excuse me, even the dogs get the crumbs from the table. Jesus said, O oh, woman, great is thy faith. You know what? All it takes is a crumb off the table of the master to take care of all your problems. Amen. Parents, you might not be where you need to be sometimes. I, I don't know. I know none of our parents and none of our families in here ever get out of the will of God. They'll never get out of the walk with God. None of y'all ever mess up. Am I right? You may be seated. Don't let the devil tell you you can't get your children covered and protected and blessed and helped. Don't let the devil keep you from coming to the altars of mercy and saying, God, my children, my children. If it wasn't for a mom and if it wasn't for a dad, she, he said, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. As much or as little as you chose because you were willing to fight. Could you, uh, you know, could, it's hard, Sister, Sister Johnson, it's hard to fight bitterness sometimes. It's hard. It's hard to overcome when you get, I mean, just, just, just come to God and let somebody tell you, you've done nothing more than a dog. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. You Canaanite woman. Hello? Well, fooey on him. Didn't tell me so, he didn't tell me how good my, my cornbread dressing was. Well, I went over there and I went to Sister Graham and I was gonna ask Sister Graham to pray for me and and and, and she misunderstood for me and, and she squirted me with a hot water hose because I she thought I said spray for me. I said pray for me. But I got a stutter and she didn't understand me. And now I'm going to fold my arms and I'm going to get mad and I'm going to get hurt and I'm not coming back, back, back to, to, to church anymore. You goat. Hello? Come on, parents. I'm going to fight through my bitterness. I'm going to fight through my problems because my kids are at stake. My kids are at stake. Don't get angry. Your kids are at stake. Trust God. You don't get the answer you want the first time. Trust God. Trust God. Trust God. He's got it for you. He's got an answer for you. He's got truth for you. He's got deliverance for you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Trust God. He might sit there and want to see just how much you want it. Hello? I believe sometimes we ask for a million dollar prayer uh, answer on a ten cent prayer. A lot of times God wants us to up the ante a little bit. Hello? Faith, a grain of mustard seed. Guess what? That's not, a lot of times we don't have any faith in our prayer. We just kind of challenge God because it said it in His Word and we don't really believe God's going to do it, but we just challenge God. Fine, God. No. Get some faith. God may, God may sit there and say, okay, you want that miracle? Let's just see how much you want it. He's not going to put more on you than you can bear. He's not going to, he's not going to, uh, uh, the Lord tells us not, to, not to, to cause our children to go to wrath. The Lord's not going to cause, but He might want you to just sit there and show Him. Hey God, here I am. I'm serious about this. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Here I am. I made it all this far. I'm not going nowhere. But for a mother. But for a father. We need some moms and dads that realizes that if my children are going to be saved, it's because I'm going to be saved. Because Let me tell you something. I, I, I've never been so moved as I was to hear Brother Wayne Huntley preach a message about our children and our parents years ago. It moved me. I never will forget it. He pulled scripture, chapter and verse, and, and to prove to you I don't preach other preachers' message. I didn't look it up tonight. Otherwise, I'd give you those chapter and verse because they were real good. But Brother Hodges, he pulled chapter and verse out. The reason our children are not saved is because our parents don't live for God. We come to church bitter and scorned and angry and upset because we put things, our pride before our walk with God. And then we wonder why our children are lethargic about their relationship with God. I want to tell you, church, the way our children are is exact replica of us. 
Have a preacher for dinner. Talk to somebody about it. Let me tell you something. You know, you reproduce more than just... Hello? You reproduce more than just your children, children. You reproduce your pew. You reproduce in your area. Sister Mary, you growing in God and all this? One of these days, Sister V, he'll look across the pew at you and say, I'm learning. Brother Hart, look back here, Brother Roger, and say, you know, I'm getting, I'm, 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 or vice versa, however it works. Let me tell you something. If you're not careful, You'll reproduce bitterness and anger and strife. Hello? Not just in your little knee highs around you, but Sister Johnson, people look up to you in this church. You're a mother in this church. Hello? Oh, you got your boy here. Hey, ain't that great? I quit now. No! That's not the time to quit. Young people, listen to me. I don't care how old you are. You've got people that look up to you. You reproduce spiritual offsprings. Run your mouth about your church today and then try to get somebody to come to your church tomorrow. Hello? Tell you, this church is bigger than me. It's bigger than the biggest one of you in here. It's going to be here when we're all gone. Hello? But let me tell you something. The old story. This is one of them evangelist stories. I, I don't know if there ever really was anybody here, okay? So get that clear. I, I'm not, y'all know what I'm talking about. I, I never like to lie. I don't like to tell you a story if I don't know it's true. But this is just one of them stories to get your heartstrings going, okay? So I just, but it, 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 it get the point across nonetheless, okay? Old dude, go to church. Every Sunday, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night. And he never could find anything good about the preacher. He never could find it. I mean, he talked bad about Sister Lissa. He talked bad about Sister Savannah. He talked bad about Sister Barry. He even talked bad about Brother Corey. He talked bad about the sound department. If the audio was too loud, he griped. If it wasn't loud enough, he complained. If it squeaked, it should have squawked. If it squawked, it should have squeaked. And every day he told his children that. He told everybody else that too. He never had any spiritual children because nobody wanted to go to a church that was that bad. Hello? You wonder why people haven't come to church with you lately? Guess what? I just told you why. Why do they want to come with you? But then, one day he got sick, was dying, laying in the hospital. Breathing machine. <sighs> Breathing for him. Food, pumping food into his stomach. Preacher heard about it. Faithful man in church. He showed up at the hospital. And the man's grown son walked to the door. This is a story I heard. Okay, it may have really happened. I don't know. But don't just get your heartstrings. Grown son walked to the door and said, Don't you dare come into this hospital room. Don't you come anywhere near my family. Why? Because for year after year after year in conversation and dinner after dinner after dinner, that preacher man had been run down. Guess what? Sister Savannah, one day your little Johnny might be the one behind this pulpit. Hello? One day, Brother Hodges, wouldn't it be cool if old Corey, Cody got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost so strong welling up inside of him and said, my God, I'm going to shake all this off. I'm going to be a preacher. And he be the man of God that's pastor in this church. Hello? It takes a mom and dad to get kids saved. It takes a mom and dad to get kids saved. It takes it. You know what? Sometimes we got kids around here. We don't have moms and dads to represent them. Brother Corey, that's when we ease in and we be a mom and dad to them in the spirit. We let them know how good it is to serve the Lord. We let them know how much we love God. Because I'm going to tell you what, they're going to reproduce you. Jesus told them in the Old Testament over and over and over again. Matter of fact, I'll read the Scripture, just in case y'all forget. In case you're not sure that it's in the Bible. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor serve them. 
For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. It takes a mom and a dad to get a kid to love God. Thank you. So whoever's clapping their hands, amen. You can stop running the aisles now. It takes a mom and a dad. If you don't have a dad in your house, you don't have a mom in your house, one of you can do it. Amen. You can get up in the morning and say, praise God, I'm going I'm to show them how to live for God. I, I'm, I'm not just going to, I'm not trying to pin merit badges tonight. But Brother Corey, I thank you for your, your walk with God you've been developing. I, I, I feel good. I feel, I feel joy in that. You know why? Because it, all of a sudden, you're, it's like a magnet that people see you because you're loving, living for God. It's helping our children. It's helping our kids. Hello? Watch this. John 14, 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus said, keep His commandments. What was one of His commandments? Love one another. Love one another. Love the work of God. Love living for God. And your kids will love living for God. Your kids will follow in your footsteps. I'm trying to hurry right now. I'm almost finished. Watch what happens when we're not careful. Oh, daughters of my people, gird thee with sackcloth. Wallow thyself in ashes. Make thee mourning as for an only son. Most bitter lamentation, for the spoiler shall suddenly come upon thee, come upon us, excuse me. Three times, Jeremiah, Amos, and Zechariah, probably more, referred to us removing our pride and getting a relationship of humility with God in order to keep from having the mourning of losing our children. Hello? I'm going to tell you what. There's nothing will disturb your mind worse than to see your children lost. Let me say that again. Maybe you didn't hear me. Nothing will disturb you for eternity like your children being lost. The rich man was in hell. The first thing that he thought of was getting me out. When he got over and he realized that he wasn't getting out, what did he do? He said, God, don't let my family come where I'm at. Send a prophet. Send a teacher. Send an angel. Send somebody because I don't want them here. How many of y'all want to see your kids and go? How many of y'all want them to join you in hell? Can I give you a secret? I talk to you young people because your parents, they're kind of too old to get this. They kind of drive between the ears. Not really. They're great people. But let me tell you something. You ever plan on having kids? Okay, good. So you're, you and me, we're going to talk here. If you go, do you, do you want to see, I mean, I know they're not here. There's no heartstrings tied up yet. What you going to name your first kid? Obama. Okay. Do you want to see your little baby Obama go to hell? You know the best way to keep him from there? You make sure you're in heaven. You've got to start now. What about you? Do you want your kids to go to hell? You've got to make sure you're in heaven. You've got to make sure you're in heaven. You know why? why? You, want, you want to know why? Because if you don't want to go to heaven, your kids ain't going to want to go either. Because let me just tell you a secret, okay? All you men and women in here, everybody in here, listen to Brother Dunn just for a second because I know you don't know this. Your children look up to you. Right. Amen. Your children admire you. They may spit in your face, tell you you don't know how to make scrambled eggs. They might not like you while they're a teenager, but they admire you. You are the greatest thing since sliced bread. You even know more than their teacher does. Hello? How many you kids plug your ears? How many of y'all, when you were your kid's age, Wondered how your mom and then knew all they knew. And here you are at the same age and you're like, am I that smart? A am, I, am I the only one that's ever noticed that? I am the only one that's noticed that? Oh, okay. But that's the truth. 
When I was a kid, my 30-year-old mama, my God, she was smart. <coughs> Hello? When I was 30, I didn't think I was that smart, but my kids did. Hello? Your kids think you, your kids admire you. Your kids look up to you. I'm going to tell you what, do you want to know why they do what they do? It's because you do it. Hello? It takes, mom, it takes a dad. Watch this. I like this. Abraham. Abraham was promised a children. Got Isaac. I mean, my pride and joy. That's my boy. God said, you're too proud. Take your son, your only son, and sacrifice him. Hello? How many of y'all, and Brother Roger, you got a whole bunch of boys. Which one, I mean, you know, you see these kids and, 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 and they're they pretty smart fellers, fart smellers or something like that. Anyway, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> but there they are. Man, they got a future ahead of them. They got all that stuff. And you look at old, uh, which one? Just pick him out. Any of them. Jude. You look at Jude. Jude, man, this guy's got it going on. He is. If just a little bit of, just a little refinement, and this guy will be. I mean, the pool shark of all New Mexico, he'll go, I mean, you know, this guy's got it going on. He knows how to shoot pool. He's going to go to the national championships, win millions of dollars in Las Vegas. He's going to be able to, he's going to be, you know, the color of money all over again. Tom Cruise and whatever that other dude's name is. He's got it going on. But Brother Roger, somewhere in our eyes we need to realize, wait a minute, some sacrifice needs to go on. Because if we're not careful, that's where he's going to be. I want him in church. I want him to make it to heaven. I want him to live for God. And I might have to take him, not literally, don't you dare go get a knife out, because what if an angel don't show up? You're going to be in prison, okay? <laughs> but, but in the figurative term, I need to get a knife and put it in the heart of what I see wrongly motivating his flesh in order to save his soul. Hello? Amen. Abraham was willing. God, you gave him to me. I've got all my pride in him. I got, I, I'm so proud of this boy. This kid can quote Scripture, and there is no Bible. Y'all get that later. <laughs> I mean, I'm proud of Isaac. And God's like, sacrifice him. That willingness to sacrifice him gave God a vessel by the name of Isaac that he could use to promise that would come in the name of Jesus. The man Christ Jesus because Abraham was willing to take the flesh of his son and sacrifice it. Too many times we're not willing to sacrifice our fleshly motivations for our children and let God have His way in their life. Hello? I know your, your junior and your Johnny I mean, your, your son is going to be the greatest ballerina there ever was. Hello? He can peer away with the best of them. But I will tell you what. Would you rather him living in a flat New York City, prissing around a stage, or would you rather him dancing in the altars during camp meeting, living in a nice house, and God providing his every need, and showing up for him, and being there for him? Hello? I'd rather my kid living for God, living in a two-bedroom house on the backside of some Navajo desert than to live in a mansion lost and going to hell. That's right. But I'm going to tell you something right now. Greater is the blessings of the righteous day in and day out and day in and day out than all of the things of this world. But it takes a parent. It takes somebody to say, I'm going to raise them up. I'm going to train them up. I'm going to teach them the way they should go. You know, I'm not going to talk about Jephthah. 
The Bible says in Acts chapter 7 and verse 51, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised of heart and ears. You know what that means? Your heart is wrapped up in the flesh and your ears are wrapped up in the love of the things of the flesh. Hello? Jesus says it not, it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, it's what comes out of the mouth because it comes from the heart. How does things get into the heart? Be careful what you see. Be careful of what you hear. Be careful of what you allow to enter into your heart because it will corrupt you. And your love of the flesh, watch what he says, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do the same, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your, anybody want to guess? Fathers do, did, and so do ye. What does that mean? You resist the Holy Ghost like your parents. <coughs> parents, you would like to see your kids have a better walk with God? You like to see your kids in the altar praying? You show them the way. You show them the way. Some of our parents in here, and I love each and every one of you, the only time you come to the altar is whenever you feel like your little Johnny or Susie's not doing right, and you drag them to the altar and you pray for them. You don't come often for yourself. You know what? Johnny or Susie's not either. Well, I don't necessarily always have to be in church. I don't have to be faithful. I'm going to tell you what. Your Johnny or Susie's not going to be faithful. Hello? Your walk with God is going to be reproduced in your children. The Scripture's clear. The Scripture is clear. Do you love the Lord tonight? Do you love God? The Bible says, forsake not the gathering of yourselves together. Amen? I want my kids to go to heaven. Well, Brother Dan, your kids aren't here. You know what? My kids watch. Hello? I got to see my daughter get up and grab that microphone and sing her little lungs out tonight while I was getting ready for this message. And you know what she said? Stand on the promises. Though there be sinking, she said, stand, 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 stand. I'm going, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You know why? Because I don't want my kids to be lost. My kids don't know it, Sister Mary, but they don't have the common sense to get up and brush their teeth in the morning. But I'm going to teach them. And you know what? It might be a miraculous power that there's an angel sitting in Maryville, Tennessee somewhere. But I'm telling you why they're getting the instruction they're getting is because I'm staying on my face and praying to God. I'm staying on... And you know what? They're being taught. Somebody is doing what I can't do physically. God is making sure it happens in the miraculous. Some of you don't have your children here. You can't bring them to church with you. I'm going to tell you what you do. You fall on your face. You'll be an example to these kids. You show them how to live for God. And watch God. God do a miracle for you and your children. Hello? I'm talking to somebody tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost in somebody tonight. I'm telling you there are some spiritual mamas and dads that are shirking your responsibility. I ain't got no kids here. I ain't nobody look up. I'm going to tell you what. They do look up to you. Somebody say amen. amen. They admire you. They think you're good. Don't y'all think that, hey, don't y'all think they're great? Wouldn't you like them to be a better example to you? Hello? I'm just, I'm just saying. God's just saying. Excuse me. I'm not saying anything. God's saying it because He gave me the Word. Hallelujah. How many of y'all want to see your kids in heaven? You've got to lead them. You've got to lead them. You've got to lead them through your faithfulness. You've got to lead them through your walk with God. Lord, if there's anything that I'm not right with you on, change me because I don't want my kids to be lost. Hello? Sister Johnson? I'm just picking on you because I looked up and I saw you. So don't, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not getting on your case. So don't text me later and say, What am I doing wrong, Pastor? I'm so sorry. No. If there's anything that this man of God under the anointing of the Holy Ghost preaches that you have a hard time with, I'm going to tell you what. Make a sacrifice for your children and you do it. Hello? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not going to get up here and preach something that God don't give me to preach. Brother Hodges, I can fill this church in two shakes of a lamb's tail. I can hire me a piano player that greases his hair just right. I can hire me a singer. Hello? Money? We can get money flowing. All I got to do is compromise. 
I want to get you to heaven. Hello? I'm going to get you to heaven. Well, Brother Dunn, I don't know about that. You want us to repent? Really? That's not modern religion. That's that old-fashioned stuff. Well, give me that old-time religion. Give me that old-time... Hello? I'm going to tell you what. I was brought up in the old-time religion. I was brought up from what it cost. I got a granddad and another granddad that fought the mosquitoes and fought the bugs and brought this gospel. And I'm going to tell you what. I'm not going to compromise. But Corey, ain't nobody going to preach a straighter gospel than what I'm going to preach. And I'm not just trying to be hard for being hard's sake. You know why? Because that's a foolish attitude. That's a foolish religion. I'm going to bust my knees every day before I get up here to preach to y'all. I am not going to get up here and preach something that's just me. You want me to preach something that's me? You want to hear me? You want to hear me preach, Sister Graham? Everything is beautiful. Jesus loves you. All you got to do is just, it's okay. If you want to be a, you know, a pot-smoking queer transvestite, oh, sweetheart, Jesus loves you. Let's go dancing on the streets of gold together. <laughs> you want, oh, you don't want to stop hooking, but you want to live for Jesus. No problem. High five. Only five. Hello? We can pack this house. Every, forgive me, I'm not just picking on them, but every drunk in this town is a born again Christian. Hello? And we could raise money from all kind of places. But I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. We're going to have revival around here of a Holy Ghost outpouring. We're going to live a holy and upright life. We're going to preach peace. Hello? We're not going to be proclaimers, uh, 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 professors. We're going to be possessors. We're going to possess the Spirit of God on the inside of us. We're going to reproduce it. God help us, we're going to reproduce it. Our children are going to be great people of God. Your grandchildren are going to live for God, run the aisle, shout, dance, worship God. Hello? But then why don't you get out there and just get all excited? Why? Because I want you to get excited. I never understood it. I got a... I, I, well, well, I guess I still got a brother-in-law because God says I still got a wife until the day that I die. She's still hooked to me in the Spirit. Not by her Spirit, but by God's Spirit. But, man, I, them boys about to get a heart attack during the football game. I mean, every time Dan Marino throw a pass, Jeff Creech would come jumping up off the couch screaming and hollering. And every time that John Elway throw a pass, T.C. Davis jump up off the couch screaming and hollering back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I couldn't keep up with them. I'm like, what? Just holler all the time. Let me tell you something. I got something to holler about because every time Jesus throws a Holy Ghost pass at somebody, every time Jesus puts a blessing on somebody, I want to rejoice. I want to scream and shout. I want to run the aisles. Why? Because God says He inhabits the praises of His people. I can scream for Elway all I want and I can't change the outcome. But I can call on the name of Jesus and I can run and dance. I want to reproduce myself. I wish everybody would say, y'all be careful when you go to that church. Man, them people crazy. Anybody want to go? Anybody ever used to go to bars, drink? Raise your hand, somebody. Yeah. Sister Sarita? Thank you. Uh, there was about ten other hands, but I saw you first. I've been there. Okay, but, I mean, I, Not like I was Okay, okay. There. Hang on, hang on. Uh, that's fine. You've been there. Sarita, get yourself together Friday night. We're going to a bar. It's dead. Everybody just sits back and goes. There's music playing. Songs are going. And it's just, we all just sit back and we're real quiet. Would you go? No. If I'm going to go to a bar, I want to go to a place about having the fun. Am I right? I, I'm, I'm talking about, I believe this church ought to be a place that people come to to get an experience. They can't get anywhere else. They can feel the power of the Holy Ghost of their head to their toe. They can be delivered from all kinds of problems. And God will give them joy and change their life and do something great. And I want to see, I'm telling you parents, it's not going to happen until we get sold out. They're going to follow you. They're going to follow you. Amen? How many of y'all want to see your kids get to heaven? If you do, stand to your feet. If you don't have a children, you want to see a children in this church get to heaven, stand to your feet and say, God, make me an example. Help me to be a sold out child of God. Lord, in the name of Jesus.
God, I'm asking you to put parents in this church of spiritual children, both in the flesh and in the spirit. Lord, let us have a desire to live for you. To see our children loving you, worshiping you. Not to be hard, not to be a cruel parents, not to, not to be bitter or angry, but to be forgiving parents. Lord, let a spirit of forgiveness come through this place, God, so that we could show our children the joy of serving you. We need to be forgiven, God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Parents, be an example unto your children. Live for God. Walk with God. Every hour of every day. Because in the hour in which you think that they're not watching. Hello? How many of y'all's kids caught you saying something you shouldn't have said? How many of y'all got... Don't, don't nobody raise their hand. I just feel it's in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to say this real quick. How many of y'all's had your kids see you screaming and hollering and losing control? Don't raise your hand. Guess what? You're teaching them how to do that. Don't come telling me about holiness if you can't hold your peace. Because the Bible says, without peace or holiness, no man shall see God. Hello? I'm going to talk to you about and teach you about holiness. I'm also going to teach you about peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall inherit. Hello? I'm telling you, church, we've got to be on it because our kids are watching. Our kids are watching. Kids, y'all watching, aren't you? You got your eyes open, don't you? Amen? Parents, love the Lord. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. See you here. Don't forget.